G'day folks, Rob here. Uh, this video is actually a bit of a follow-up on a recent video where I looked at um, how you can mitigate any um, increased water level from rain in your aquaponic system if it's set up outside. Over the last week or so, as you can see from this little bit of a graphic here, we have had a torrential amount of rain in southeast Queensland, Australia. Basically what they were calling a rain bomb sat over the southeast corner of the state. Now we lost power for a couple of days and I didn't actually video a great deal, but I thought I'd just give you a bit of a, a roundup on what we've done here, um, just to keep the system ticking over. Now to begin with we'll start off down the back here. Uh, this is the old aquaponic hoop house and we've just thrown a tarp over the top because we needed somewhere to put a generator um, after losing power. We have lost power before in floods and yeah um, as you all know fish need oxygen too so we had to find some way to power the um, system. Now I do have a battery operated backup system but the 100 amp battery I had in there would only last so long um, so we needed to get ourselves a generator and we ended up getting this little jobby here. Um, not an ad for that company whatsoever but we decided to get one big enough that would also run the freezers as well as we knew the power would be out for a couple of days and we have um, more than a few dollars worth of food um, frozen in the freezer. And basically we ran a extension cord, one up to the house for the fridge and freezer and um, one to the aquaponic system and made sure we definitely had a drip loop so any water that um, accumulated on the cord would come down and drip on the ground and not go uphill and into the generator plug itself and cause issues. And to keep it off the ground we popped him over an IBC cage here and then over the top of another little barrow because we definitely didn't want it sitting in all that water. We've still got water sitting on the ground everywhere. And then from there we had it behind my little yin yang sign and yes the painters um, haven't finished yet well their stuff is still stored down here. It'll be a couple of uh, probably a week or so before they get back. But yeah the power was held up there off the ground and then over to the um, aquaponics area where Bianca is currently hand feeding fish I think. So they've been um, slowly being acclimatized to having us over the top of the tank with Bianca feeding them. But as you can see they've still got their appetite and the water is very clear in there at the moment uh, because we've increased the uh, flow rates to everything. Um, I'll just leave Bianca to that and we'll have a look at the pH in the system. Uh, this is going to take a while to level out but you're going to have to trust me it's sitting at around about 6.7 at the moment. 6.6, 6.7 um, so the pH in the system has stayed rather high. I have only dosed it twice with calcium hydroxide in the last four or five days. And from what I can tell, the plants aren't really suffering at all, except for the blooming caterpillars are back on these beetroot. Oh, by the way, these beetroot will be sacrificed very soon. That one for the uh, dinner table. Um, we're just going to polish off any decent leaves on these guys and start planting out some brassicas because we're coming into, actually it is autumn now or fall. Happy autumn and fall to all you Aussies. Um, yeah, so we're going to start getting some of our winter crops in. There is actually um, one lot of plants that do look like they have suffered a bit. If I can get the camera up and that is the beans. I don't know whether it's because I had the, um, the bells out of the beds and they were constantly full of water for a couple of days. But yeah, they don't look to have done too well. A lot of the leaves have um, dried up and fallen off. Come around here to give you a closer look. So yeah, they're, they're not looking too happy. There are a number of beans on there that we need to take off and we'll use them uh, pretty much all straight away but I am thinking of um, removing these beans as well um, getting them out of there and again putting some brassicas in we really do eat a lot more greens than anything else at the moment and we've taken um, a, a bit of a liking to the broccoli leaves so we're thinking about densely planting out with broccoli um, other plants that haven't done too bad at all through all this is our little mini capsicum here as you can see or sweet pepper as you can see it's absolutely loaded with fruit Fingers crossed no fruit fly attack as of yet. Um, so yeah, uh, pretty chuffed with the way that that's going and the sweet potato is continuing to grow and put on more vine all the time. Just back around here at the business end of things, um, one issue we did have was due to the amount of rain, couldn't clean out the radial flow settler. So we ended up having a lot of solids bubbling up from the bottom. Basically they start to um, decompose down the bottom, produce a lot of gas and the solids raise to the surface. And as a result, I had a whole heap come through here to the moving bed bioreactor. Unfortunately, I thought I filmed it, but um, yeah, I can't find the footage. We had a lot of solids come in here and um, clog up this little outlet arm that drops water over the top. And then the um, cleaner water or processed water is brought up through the solids lifting pipe there. Um, so yeah, we basically had a load of solids enter into there. And because the uh, tank itself was so full, I couldn't decant off any water with our little bleed off valve here. Um, so we decided to actually just pump it out straight from the bottom out onto the yard 
and we ended up decreasing the overall volume in the whole system by around about 200 litres which was fine because it meant we could um, then turn the beds back into a flood and drain again. Um, one consequence of that was a lot of solids in here. Um, I decided to try and clean them out the best I could. So I opened up the air valve all the way and we ended up with a lot of solids coming through the outlet into that little filter down there. So much so that it's pretty much all clogged up that little filter. As you can see, the water's just ru rushing over the side. So over the next couple of days, I'm going to have to um, pull out all the shade cloths from in there and then yeah, give it a little bit of a clean out. So that was one issue we had. Uh, the other issue was we were getting a lot of um, condensation in these airlines. You might be able to see there's a small amount of water in there at the moment. That's just because of the, the general humidity. Um, so that's easy enough um, fix. Kira just broke off the line there, uh, splashed me with some water as she took it off and just emptied all the moisture out of there. So we're just keeping an eye on that, making sure that it's not building up with too much condensation. Just quickly too, I've had a few people ask this week how the guide is going. A uh, little bit of an update oh, for you folks who aren't aware. I'm adding a downloadable PDF to the Chop and Flip IBC build in our backyard aquaponics guide. More information about that guide up there and then down in the description. I've got all the information down. Now I'm just having to recreate a couple of pictures because I've added extra information into the PDF that isn't in the video section of that module. So fingers crossed I'll have it done by next weekend. A couple of days without power uh, really did set me back a little bit. And a bit of a heads up, uh, once all those um, PDF downloadables are put on the guide in the associated video modules, the price will be going up to uh, $20 US. Um, so yeah, if you buy it now, you get um, everything that I add later on uh, will be covered in that price and you don't have to pay anything extra. But anyway, that's enough of that. Uh, back to the system. Just back to the power issues. Uh, what we have here in the cabinet is our backup air system. So we have a little backup pump down there. I've actually got a video on this. Um, you can check out it was when it was hooked up to the old system. There'll be a little link that pops up somewhere. So this little pump pumps out that many um, litres of air per minute um, because I forgot and is basically run by this 100 amp hour um, deep cycle battery and this little um, relay just controls whether it comes on or off. Basically, if the power is on, the little switch is held open. As soon as the power is cut off, the switch closes, completes the circuit, and that little um, compressor kicks on, sends our air up here, which is teed into our um, air line that comes from this compressor. We have a one-way valve there that stops air going down into the compressor. And over there at the back, we have a one-way valve that stops air from this compressor going down into the um, backup one while it's not working. So the air just comes through there and goes into the uh, fish tank on the same line. It just makes life a heck of a lot easier running it that way. Uh, one thing I did have to do was go out and buy a, a charger that was suitable for a deep cycle. Um, I have had people tell me that, you know, a solar charger um, would be great for this job. Um, but then again, it wouldn't have come in handy um, over the last uh, four or five days as it was basically overcast at the same time. But yeah, so that's how the backup um, is set up there with the air. And all I had to do is basically plug the um, little uh, power board plug from over the back there straight into here. And we just ran it off the generator um, for a couple of days. So um, it really, really paid for itself. It kept the fish alive for three days when that battery probably would have only lasted for oh, 36 to 48 hours really tough with the way it went um, no fish loss and all we did was um, basically go through a heck of a lot of water as it was overflowing out down that side corner there so yeah overall pretty tough with the way things went we are going to have to start topping off with things like iron and magnesium just because the levels would have depleted uh, through the amount of water that ran through the system and out to waste but as for nitrate um, i'm pretty sure we still have a load of nitrate left in the system so there you go folks, there's a bit of a look at how the system held up through the rain bomb that we had last weekend. I'm not sure if I like that term, but anyway, the buckets of rain that we received through the um, system last weekend. And also too, there is a video that I've posted just looking at the river levels around the area. I didn't want to show people in distress. So it's just looking at river levels and the cityscape with the river flowing in front of it. So check that out if you're curious as to see how high the uh, river levels came here. It, it has been pretty devastating as it has been in the past. Um, but I know us Aussies are pretty resilient. Um, we'll pick ourselves up, dust ourselves off, and away we go. We'll just do what we have to do. I would like to thank all those folks who are supporting us by coming along every week and checking out these videos and thumbing them up and leaving comments down below. Really do appreciate it. And thanks again to you folks who are supporting us on the um, subscriber platforms, the YouTube membership one and our patron page, um, Farm Your Own Yard. 
thank you very much. I do hope you're all well and happy and your systems are booming and your gardens as well. And I'll catch you later. Cheers folks and happy growing. Look at him, he's just sitting there. Second course, what are they gonna do with it? Yeah, it doesn't take much for him. These guys certainly do love their greens. This is the mushroom herb. So we are just recycling nutrients round and round the system by feeding them this, but gives them something a little bit different to eat, doesn't it? Yeah, they went ape on the last one. <laughs> Swimming around with a full leaf in its mouth. <laughs>